I had never planned on making a video covering this project, but COVID hit, I'm in quarantine, I've got nothing better to do, and here we are. But before our world took one on the chin from a virus, I had access to a laser cutter and decided to attempt making my own keyboard. I didn't film any of this early work, so let's see if I can get you caught up. I started with a sheet of 1.5mm stainless steel that I cut switch spots into for a 67% keyboard. I then ordered some Gatoron yellow switches as well as a PCB. These switches were then soldered to the PCB with the switch plate sandwiched between. Finally, I cut a backing plate out of 3mm stainless. This was just about everything I needed to assemble my own keyboard. All I lacked was a spacer plate to tie everything together, and that's what this video is about. So let's get started. Maybe. It all started with a piece of half inch Baltic birch that I painted with white lacquer. I then taped off a design that I fancied, sprayed another coat of white lacquer over that tape to seal the edges, and then finished that with three coats of china red. From there I loaded up my CNC with a 1 8 inch Amana Tool spectra coated bit that I got from toolstoday.com. This isn't sponsored, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing Amana right. But I wanted to try these and figured pitting one of their downcut bits against a piece of lacquer coated stock would be a pretty good test. A test these spectra coated bits passed on the first run and without me even getting the speeds and feeds dialed perfectly. The edges needed a little cleanup, but nothing a little hand sanding couldn't handle. I also forgot to cut the mounting holes on the CNC, but I got that done pretty quickly on the drill press. While I was over there, I also decided to tackle the clearance hole that I needed for the USB port. I drilled two side-by-side -side quarter inch holes and then used a chisel and a file to sneak up on the correct shape and size. Afterwards, I piled on about 10 coats of clear lacquer and let it sit for a couple of days. Meanwhile, I started thinking about the bottom plate. I don't know shit about keyboard ergonomics, but some research showed that somewhere around 10 degree angle of attack would be a good starting point. I achieved this with some simple rubber feet mounted to the bottom plate, and then got busy putting the whole thing together. At this point, I thought I was done. The switches felt amazingly smooth, the sound wasn't too obnoxious, and I was happy for a while. But after a couple of hours of use, my wrists were bothering me. The front deck of the keyboard was just too high for my non-ergonomic style of use. To combat this, I decided to remake the spacer plate as a wedge rather than a flat piece of half inch Baltic birch. This would get the typing height at the front edge of the board as low as possible and build in an eight degree angle of attack. The only hurdle was how to cut that wedge. I want to taper that is basically eight degrees. So it goes from half inch ply to quarter inch ply from top to bottom. And I tried it on this piece with my bandsaw and I just couldn't get it done. My bandsaw is not accurate enough. The guides are kind of jacked up and my fence setup is meager at best. So what I'm going to try here is cutting this on the CNC and I cut these wedges first and wrapped them in tape. And this features the eight degree wedge that I need. And I'm going to glue them on the bottom of this piece of stock. I will then glue the bottom of these wedges to the CNC bed, and then I'm gonna run a surfacing path. The idea being that this, these wedges will create the, the angle that I need, the wedge that I need out of this stock. Now, keep in mind, before you laugh at me, I probably wouldn't show this if it didn't work, so don't laugh too hard. And secondly, I've never done anything like this before. I've never even ran a surfacing pass on my CNC before. So I have no idea if this is going to work, but I'm going to try it.
After a touch up with a hand plane and a little sanding, I was left with a perfect 8 degree wedge. I was honestly a little surprised that my unorthodox method worked, but with that hurdle jumped I had a lot of steps to redo. I've been using the keyboard for a few days now and couldn't be happier. The switches are incredibly smooth, and even with my tall SA Profile keycaps, the board is both compact and comfortable to use. And while it took me a couple of tries and a little longer than I would have liked to get it right, I had a lot of fun building this thing. Hell, I might even do it again. This was, after all, just a prototype. In any case, thanks for watching this little video of mine. I appreciate it.